Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'm here with Valerie who has had some good results using some of the principles that we discussed in Healthy Gut, Healthy You. And she was another person who was nice enough to share her story. So Valerie, welcome and thank you for being so kind to share your story with us today. Oh, my pleasure. So tell me a little bit about kind of the road that you were on before you found Healthy Gut, Healthy You. Uh, of course. So two years ago, I was diagnosed with SIBO by my naturopathic doctor, and uh, I tried to treat it, but I wasn't getting anywhere. So then a few months later, I signed up for a program, an eight-month program with a functional uh, medicine doctor right. and uh, we tried a bunch of we did a bunch of testing we tried a bunch of supplements and um, I, I didn't get anywhere with that either oh, no. so then I discovered healthy gut healthy you and um, I read it like three times and I implemented yes. <laughs> it, and for the first time, it I, I felt like I was actually getting somewhere, mm -hmm. and it was really reassuring to kind of have, how do I go from point A to point B in, right. in the same spot? So I already could see ahead and kind of plan where I wanted to go. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, that's that's great. I mean, um, <laughs> it's it's always such a reassuring reminder to hear that people have seen naturopaths, seen functional medicine doctors, and th those providers are probably trying to do the best that they can. Uh, but there there is a lot of wisdom written into the protocol in Healthy Gut Healthy You. As someone who specializes chiefly in gut issues, I think it's sometimes hard for patients to wrap their head around the fact that a book written by a gut specialist might get you better results than a, a generalist, even if you're working with them one-on-one -on -one and doing testing and having all this personalization. Because uh, fortunately, if, if you understand the way the, the gut works, there's kind of this, this map or this algorithm that you can work through, like, like you mentioned. And I, I've also found your other point that it is helpful for patients to understand the one thing that we're doing right now, that's not the end-all be-all. That's one stepping stone in a number of different therapies that can kind of be woven together to get you 20% you know, from the diet, 20% from the probiotics, 20% from the antimicrobials. And when you have that bigger picture vision and the kind of that long game perspective, I think it really helps people not get frustrated and say, oh, I did probiotics, but I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't cured. Well, you know, they, they may not cure everyone. They may not completely resolve everyone's symptoms. But if you get a, a nice bump in your improvement, then that's a step in the right direction. And then we reevaluate and we take another step. And it seems like that's kind of what you did with Healthy Gut, Healthy You. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing I want to mention that I really like about the book and the program is that um, it teaches you how to deal with setbacks. Mm. So okay. basically, when I was first diagnosed, my doctors told me that I would have to deal with this for the rest of my life. And mm. like, they kind of put this negative image on it, like I was stuck and there was nothing I could do for myself. So right from the get go, I felt discouraged and I felt like kind of hopeless. But the way that the science is presented in the book and the way that the, the steps are laid out, it really it teaches you what to do when setbacks happen. And now when I have a setback, instead of feeling like, oh no, I have SIBO again and I have to get tested. And I, you know, I just try to revisit the therapies that worked for me before and it works. Wow. And then it only takes a, ma a matter of days and I'm back to normal again. And you, you mentioned it so well in the book, like, Sometimes, you know, it makes me realize, okay, I haven't been sleeping that well recently, or I've, I've been kind of falling off my diet, you know, so it really encouraged me to be mindful about everything that I'm doing. I mean, that's such a fantastic point. And, and, you know, I just want to echo the fact that it is discouraging when you have a setback. And if you don't understand that setbacks are 
kind of normal, then what can happen if you don't understand that is people start to really kind of psych themselves out. Like you're saying, oh my God, SIBO is back. I've got to get tested again. And, and then sometimes people will even say, well, well, screw it. I'm, I'm not going to keep eating healthy or keep using my probiotics or whatever. And, and that kind of potentiates in the snowball. Whereas if you have a, a different frame of mind on this, you realize we all have ups and downs. It, you know, I think everyone has these ups and downs. It's just, are your ups and downs down here where you're feeling terrible or are the ups and downs up here where you're feeling pretty good most of the time? And yeah, you have a couple of days that aren't as good as others, but you understand that those little setbacks occur and they're not abnormal. So that that's fantastic. And that it's really, um, you know, really pleasing to, for me to hear that because I do see firsthand here in the clinic how patients struggle with the, the mental aspect of this. So I'm so happy to hear that the book kind of helped pull you out of the lurch there of, of despairing uh, thinking. That's awesome. Yeah, um, it really taught me about the importance of having a, a good mindset yeah. because yeah. the the minute that I realized that I can do something for m myself was probably – from that point on, I started getting better. Yeah, and it's so empowering. I mean, well, well said. So happy that you had that, that kind of realization from, from a psychological perspective. Tell us about some of the symptoms that you were suffering with. Uh, so the, the most annoying symptom that I had was bloating. Mm. Uh, I was really uncomfortable, and uh, I would be bloated all the time like even from the moment that I, I woke up in the morning until the end of the day and I just felt this heaviness in my st stomach just standing up was like not fun at all so that was probably the 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 biggest complaint and I also had constipation and some belching which were other unpleasant uh, symptoms and then I had like the non-digestive symptoms like joint pain and uh, just brain fog and headaches and yeah I'm so happy they're all gone now. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so fortuitous that, that the gut can drive all of those problems, right? You have the gut problem in and of itself, and you have the gut joint and the gut brain with the joint pain and the brain fog. And that's why it's, it's so powerful, the impact one can achieve when they improve their gut health. Now, you said you had SIBO. Was this tested with the naturopath or with the, the functional medicine doctor? Do you, do you have a formal SIBO breath test? I do. Yeah. Okay. And, and the reason why I ask is because there, there's this thinking that probiotics are bad for SIBO, unfortunately, they're, they're, that, that rumor kind of circulates in some circles. Uh, and and there, you know, there may be a degree of truth to that where there might be a very small subset, but, but I, I think what ends up happening is um, one person said it, another person said it, now enough people have said it where that canard kind of has some ability to kind of self-propagate itself and then patients think that and so they placebo themselves into expecting to have a negative reaction from probiotics. Well, in actuality, I would assume it's probably 5% or less of people. Um, but what was your experience with the, with the probiotics? What did you notice from using them? Um, so they made me feel a lot better from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried the three categories and I, I'm still on them like currently. So I take them every other day and sometimes I, I just do a full week on them. Uh, uh, they were very helpful with the bloating, even with anxiety and other non-digestive symptoms. Sure. And that's what the research tells us. The research has shown clearly, as I talk about how they get healthy you, that probiotics can be quite helpful for IBS, which could include bloating and constipation, and for SIBO, according to four, more than four clinical trials, SMRIs and one meta-analysis, two meta-analyses showing that probiotics can improve mood. Um, so for, for anyone who might be in a similar boat as you, where they have had a positive SIBO breath test and maybe the provider is telling them, oh, don't use probiotics. It's not to say that you are guaranteed not to have any kind of negative reaction to probiotics, but I would certainly say they are well worth a trial. And I mean, clearly in your case, they were, it sounds like they were pretty pivotal in, in that road of improvement that you were on. Absolutely. What else? Were, were there some other things, low FODMAP, oh. elemental diet, antimicrobials that seem to stand out in terms of being able to help you? There's one thing that really took me like from here to here in terms of uh, the foods that I could tolerate, and mm. that's the intestinal repair formula. Mm. Um, it, it 
it really allowed me to like enjoy off-plan foods from time to time even things like eggs and stuff and like it um i was on it for some time and it, it really it really helped with with my symptoms because i so the i followed the program and i was kind of stuck on that step uh removed so um the part where we yeah and the elemental diet um i i felt better but i wasn't quite where i wanted to be and once i uh tried intestinal repair formula it was like night and day it was such a a positive improvement Mm. that really brought me forward to where i am today awesome yeah and that's definitely something i see with some patients where and and again so so for audience i should clarify one thing that we updated the name from intestinal repair formula to intestinal support formula it's the same exact compound just for regulatory reasons apparently we can't claim to be repairing anything only only a drug can do that so we had to change the name Uh, um, but one of the reasons why I do recommend using intestinal support formula at kind of an end phase application is because that's when patients tend to respond to it the best. And and so you had worked through the majority of the steps and you had gone through diet and probiotics and also antimicrobials and elemental diet, improving all along the way. But then it seems that you were unable to successfully reintroduce foods and that could be because the immune system in your gut was still really quick to attack. All the other work had likely very much so improved the state of the bacteria and fungus, but the bacteria and fungus have to also be in harmony with the immune system. And so this may have been why the reintroduction of food wasn't very successful, was because the immune system was always just ready to, ready to attack. And so this is what the intestinal support formula does nicely, is it, it binds to various irritants in the gut gives the immune system a chance to calm down. And then the the immune system tends to ramp itself up or calm itself down. People tend to get stuck in these self-feeding cycles because if you eat a food that causes inflammation that may damage your gut, that leads to leaky gut, that leads to further immune system activation, it's this kind of downward cascade you can get stuck in. But if you can interrupt that cycle, there is no longer that inflammatory response to the food, then the leaky gut can start to heal, then the immune system can start to tone itself down and now you start to kind of have this upward cycle and improvement and that manifests in your case as the ability to bring in new food which is a huge win it may sound kind of silly and simple but for someone who has a really sensitive gut just being able to eat something like eggs or broccoli or garlic and not have you know, a flare of joint pain or bloating can be a godsend. I mean, that's the difference between being able to go out and, and maybe have a meal with friends or kind of having to reclude into your, your bubble of safe food. So from a lifestyle perspective, I know that that can be very, very nice to, to have that, that, that uh, leeway. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Awesome. Well, great. I mean, I'm so, so happy that you came across Healthy Gut, Healthy You. Uh, for, for our audience listening, I, I hope that this helps you or for maybe people who are new to our audience and they're trying to figure out where to go with how to resolve their health complaints, uh, definitely consider giving Healthy Gut, Healthy You read because I, I wrote that book as an experienced clinician who focuses in the gut and trying to provide the reader with a map of how to go through all the different steps rather than just trying one thing that you write about or trying another thing that you write about or going to a well-intentioned doctor but who might be a generalist and might not have the, the scope and the depth of knowledge on gut ailments and how to effectively kind of uh, remedy those issues. And, and you're such a, a beautiful example of that bloating, constipation, joint pain, brain fog, you know, those things all now, um, I'm assuming, are pretty much under wraps. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, great. I mean, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing your story. Um, do you have any kind of parting words you want to leave people with? Um, no, just to, to say that I think the book is a, a really good investment from my point of view and like to, to give it a try and kind of take responsibility for your own health. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I want to second that. I, I think people don't understand how much power they, they have if they have a good, clear process right in front of them and they take these things one step at a time. And there's definitely a time and a place for doctors and clinicians. But, uh, you know, I, I think we should close with this kind of note of empowerment because you can 
achieve more than I think you might give yourself credit for if you have the right guide and the right process. Absolutely. Awesome. Valerie, thank you again. It's been a real pleasure chatting. My pleasure. Bye.